Obsidian Entertainment, and Xbox Game Studios, the team that brought you The Outer Worlds, bring you the smallest game that you're going to play all year. Grounded. What is going on, everybody? Draco Invictus here, and we are going to be taking a look at the creative mode in Grounded today. Now, of course, there is the survival mode where you can play a, one of the four characters and this game is also cross-play cross -play compatible, which means that you can play it with up to three friends and they can be on Xbox or on PC, totally cross-play compatible. So today we're going to take a look at the creative mode. So let's jump into it. Hit that intro. All right, guys, so here on the main screen, you can see we have single player, multiplayer credits and options. We are going to go into single player because we want to go into the creative mode. And we're going to pick a new game. Now, I have played a couple hours of the survival mode of this, and I really dig it. I will be doing live stream of the survival play. Uh, some of my friends will be jumping in, jumping out and stuff like that. We're going to have a ton of fun. So... You can pick any one of these characters. They don't have any stats that make them any different. So just pick for personality. Uh, the two that I really enjoy are Max and Hoops. Uh, and they each have their own distinct personality when they talk. Because they do kind of talk to themselves as you're playing the game. So that's kind of fun. So let's check out some of their quick personalities. Maxwell Smalls. Look at him, all kinds of attitude. Willow. Willow Branch, nice. Well done, Hoops. Yep, see, all great attitude, great personality. Pete looks terrified. <laughs> Way to go, Pete. All right, so for this, uh, we're at the, like I said, it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna grab Hoops here and um, we're gonna come over here to the mode selector. Now there are uh, several modes for survival. So you have mild, which is the yard is a hostile environment, but stats are more forgiving and friendly fires off. You have medium, which is what I played on. Moderate stress level, manage thirst, hunger, health, and stamina while you fight to survive. Then of course you have, whoa, the most punishing way to live the tiny life. Creatures are tougher, vitals are harder to keep filled, and everything breaks faster. I'm sure some of you will be like, eh, that's the only way you should play. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to play the way I want to play. Thank you very much. <laughs> and then we have creative. Zero stress. Craft and explore without or with no resource management or existential threats. And uh, so there are pretty much no bugs in the yard is what that means. So uh, we are going to stick with, uh, with creative and we are going to go ahead and start the game. This is the starting location for all games. Um... All right, we're, we're going to turn hoops down a little bit there. Uh, this is the starting location, uh, whether you're in creative mode or in the survival mode. Um, obviously, if you were in survival mode, you'd want to be picking up like peblets and sprigs and fibers and all that stuff. In creative mode, you don't need to worry about any of that. Uh, because there is no resource management. You have unlimited resources, so you can build as big as you want to. This is uh, where you would analyze things uh, to unlock new recipes and stuff like that. We don't need that, but we're going to continue on down this path here because I know that there's a, uh, a good little um, area here. Let's uh, pick up this pebblet so that this little die lawn mites. I died by lawn mites and <laughs> there were like nine of them and I had a rock. <laughs> Uh, this again is uh, for uh, the campaign, the survival mode. Uh, you will interact with this uh, mysterious device. But I just happen to know that there's a pretty decent little um, flat area here that uh, we can kind of play with a little bit. So in creative mode, there is no resource management. You don't have to unlock any recipes. They're all unlocked. 
you don't have to harvest resources. You don't have to cut down grass and dandelions and and go grab mushrooms and stuff like that. I like this place uh, because there's several little mus uh, mushroom areas. So this is a good starting base location. Mushrooms there, mushrooms there, and there's a juice box which helps with your hunger and your thirst. In creative mode, you don't need to worry about that. You never go hungry, you never go thirsty. So let's just jump into the menu. So we're gonna go over to the crafting menu and uh, I'll go through the tabs really quickly and then we'll take a look at the base building. So materials are things um, that you can convert. So like if you wanted rubber, you'd need uh, one sap and one acid gland to make rubber. Uh, if you wanted woven fiber, you would need three plant fiber uh, to turn into one woven fiber. So you're going to need these things for different kinds of crafting and building and whether it's weapons, tools, base building, etc. So you're going to be spending a lot of time in the materials section. Uh, tools, again, everything is unlocked. Um, so the peblet axe works as a decent weapon. Its damage, as you can see, is about what? What is that like two or three or something like that over on the right hand side of the screen? Great for cutting down grass and dandelions. A peblet hammer for uh, smashing acorns and uh, quartzite. Uh, then you get the spear, the torch, and all the other things that you won't need in creative mode. <laughs> but they're all unlocked. Everything is unlocked for you, uh, including all the different armor sets, uh, different uh, workbench tools, bombs, bows, armor, glue, super armor glue, uh, ant clubs, and all that good stuff. Uh, snacks, art, like a stuffed bee, a stuffed mite, a stuffed gnat, because that's exactly what you want in your house, right? All the stuff that's outside trying to kill you. But I guess that's no different than Fallout 4. Um, here we are in base building, and this is everything right now uh, that you can build bases with. It's a pretty limited set, but um, it's totally functional, and it totally fits with the, the narrative string of this game of you're building things out of blades of grass and, and twine that you made from plant fiber and, you know, stems and, and stuff like that. So this totally makes sense. Uh, meal prep, again, you won't need it in creative mode, but these are all the things that you can use to make your life a little bit easier in survival mode. So even if you aren't going to use creative mode, you should jump into creative mode just to see the different things that you will be able to find and use in survival mode. Uh, you got traps, decor, again, a bunch of heads, chairs, um, totems, mold sconces. Yeah, sure, whatever. And then this is literally every resource in the game that you have found. And of course, we have them all. So that's it for the menus. Let's jump into the base building and let's just build something very, very simple here. Uh, we're going to grab a piece of scaffold. I, I'm not super hip on the... Um, on the build mode, uh, the, the menu that they use uh, is kind of weird. Uh, let's just go ahead and put it at, I don't know, that height. And again, because you have unlimited resources, you don't have to worry about um, setting up. Like normally it would set up the blueprint like this blue frame. And then you would come back with your actual like blades of grass or stocks or whatever it is. And then actually build the item. So... Um, but in this case, with unlimited resources, uh, we don't have to worry about any of that. So let's jump back over here. We're going to grab some stairs. And we will hit, press the wrong button. There we go. And then we're going to grab a floor. Put a floor on there. Wrong button again. It's just going to take some getting used to. <laughs> but... There's our, so there's our basic structure. We can uh, put some walls up. Let's grab a um, sturdy door. We'll put that door here. Then we'll grab a windowed stem wall. And uh, it has, it works in a snap, or I guess these aren't snapping. There we go. As you can see, it has so many Ridiculous snap locations. There we go. And we'll put one on that side. 
and then we'll put a full wall on the back. There, there's our little lookout tower. That's what we're gonna call it. There we go. It's an apartment made for one. So, uh, yeah, that is, that's pretty much it for, uh, for building. Now let me talk about some of the things that you can build um, in survival mode that are going to help you out really quick. Since we're here and this video isn't too terribly long, uh, we do want to come over here to utilities. Uh, one of the first things you'll be able to build is the lean to, uh, you will be using a lot of these in the game. Uh, this is your respawn point. If you die, it's also where you sleep. So if you select it, I can uh, set it as a spawn point. So if you're on the other side of the map from your base and you're out exploring, but you need to sleep or in case you die because you get eaten by a wolf spider, like I did, uh, then that way you're not respawning all the way back, uh, at your base. Wherever you put a lean to and set it as the respawn location, that's where you'll respawn. Obviously, you can also sleep here between the hours of 2000 and 0600, or we can get out of the menu uh, since it's only 1045 in the morning. So that's the lean to um, storage chests and storage baskets. The storage basket is not very secure. Um, storage chest is well made and it also stacks 40 items. You can hold, you have. You can have 30 stacks of items in your inventory, and this gives you another 40. And of course you could just keep making them if you wanted to. Um, you have a plank pallet, log pallet, uh, just so that you can keep your area clean. Uh, water containers, uh, workbenches, sap catchers. Uh, water container, you would put drops of water in it. And if we jump over to, oh, no, wrong button. There we go, meal prep. The dew collector, because if you drink out of a puddle, your hunger goes up. You, you quench your thirst, but your hunger goes up. So there, you want like fresh drops of dew because that's like pure water. And so it doesn't affect your hunger. Um, obviously you want like a roasting pit so you can cook the meat, uh, jerky rack, etc. Also, um, talking about this box, uh, this juice box over here. Uh, another source to get uh, your thirst quenched. Let's see if there's one. Ah, uh, here's a drop. So you would drink this, and it both takes care of your thirst and your hunger. It doesn't fill it all the way up, but um, it would certainly help. And um, so, yeah, uh, here's another one here. So in survival mode, there are at least two juice boxes, two that I've found so far anyway. I only played a couple hours, so... I haven't explored the whole place. Uh, but yeah, juice boxes are great for that. Um, also, you can find uh, dew drops on the ground uh, for thirst. And then, of course, for hunger, the most basic thing that you could do would be come over here and pick the little mushrooms. Because those will uh, take care of your hunger. So that is... The creative side, you can build as big as you want. I expect that I will spend a quite a lot of time in the creative side of this game, just building, just, I mean, uh, have bases all over the map, every corner, you know, build over by the big oak tree over there, wherever it is. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's that way. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that I was able to give you a little bit of information. If you've been kind of kicking around the idea of getting grounded, uh, you're into the whole base building thing. Uh, they gave us an entire mode where we don't have to worry about, you know, thirst or hunger or being attacked or anything like that. Now, of course, if you want to put your stuff to the test, you got to do it in survival mode because you're certainly not going to get attacked here. Uh, I will be spending most of my time when playing grounded in survival mode just because I think that um, it's going to be a lot of fun to, you know, have to build, you know, traps and and all those things to keep the, the bugs out. So if you guys get any questions, comments, kicks, complaints, go ahead and leave them down in the comment section below. I want to see your base builds. If you decide to get this game and you're going to build a base, uh, hit me up over on my Facebook page, link in the description below, or you can visit my new Discord server. 
which uh, I'm also sharing with my woodworking uh, friends as well. So um, again, the link for the Discord server is in the description below. Uh, make sure you hit that up and uh, we will uh, talk about base building and stuff like that. Remember that this game is a work in progress by Obsidian. They know that they're going to be adding more things to this game. They're going to be tweaking things to this game. This is not the final product. So I imagine that there will be more things that we will see in the future. And um, if I need to make another video about something new that they added, I will be more than happy to do that. Uh, I think that this game's a lot of fun. Visually, it's gorgeous. I can't wait to see this on a next-gen console. I also have it installed on my PC. Why? I don't know. <laughs> because I want to see how it plays on the PC using a keyboard and a mouse versus using a controller. Because maybe I'll like playing it on PC better than on the Xbox. But again, this is a cross-play game. So if I'm going to play with friends, it doesn't matter what platform I'm on, PC or Xbox. Uh, if, and it doesn't matter what my friends are on. So because we can all play together, and I think that that is fantastic. I love uh, the cooperative uh, multiplayer, and I think that that's going to be a lot of fun. I know in survival, because you have to find all of these recipes and blueprints and things like that, when you are playing in multiplayer, from what I've heard, if you're playing in multiplayer and you unlock a new recipe or find a new blueprint or something like that, it immediately gets shared with all of your friends that are in the game with you. So that's a great way to kind of build up your, your character and what they can do in survival mode. So I think that that is fantastic. I, uh, Bravo Obsidian. Again, I've played the game a couple hours. Let me get 15, 20 hours into this game and see what we can really do. Uh, I will be live streaming survival mode. So uh, hit that sub button hit the bell notification icon so that you get notified when I do a live stream. So if you want to actually see some survival gameplay and see how much I suck at survival games, then uh, yeah, hit me up and uh, we'll have a lot of fun. Until next time, I want you guys to take care of yourselves out there. This is Drake Winvictus saying this has been the greatest day in my life. See ya!